Minneapolis, Portland, Austin, Texas, cut $150 million from the police budget. Well, there is that. People's Republic of Travis County, it's a different place. New polling supports that which so many of us here in the Lone Star State have been suspecting and hoping Ted Cruz is on his way out. And I will say my race here in Texas is a battleground race. The Democrats are spending over a hundred million dollars. Chuck Schumer's made clear I'm his number one target. George Soros is pouring millions of dollars into the state of Texas. My last race, as you know, Maria, I won by less than three points because I'm the Democrats' top target. And, 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 and so I'm grateful for, for the people all across the country that, that go to tedcruz.org, that make contributions, that support our campaign, because I'll give you my word, I'm going to keep fighting for the rule of law, for the Constitution, for the Bill of Rights, and I'm going to keep fighting to secure the border, even as we see these radicals undermine our safety. We just had a poll last week that showed it as a one-point race, and yet we can expect Mitch again not to spend any money to defend me, which means that the only way that we hold on is if the folks watching this show go to tedcruz.org right now, go online to tedcruz.org, make a contribution of five, 10, 25, 50, 100 bucks, because my race, my support is not from the big money special interests in Washington, D.C. It, it, it is from constitutional conservatives across the country who go to tedcruz.org and, and, and who help Give me the resources to withstand a hundred million dollars from these left wing Democrats and Marxists who are trying to invade this country and destroy this country. Now, this is a bit of an update from a story we covered earlier this month. To be fair, living as a Democrat in Texas gives you some trust issues. Everything can look like a slam dunk one way, but at the last minute, the Republicans pull a Hail Mary out of nowhere and all hope of justice and righteousness are lost. If you want an example of what I'm talking about, just look at all of the drama going on with our very crime-happy Attorney General Ken Paxton. But the reason things like this happen so often down here is because, frankly, the Republicans have been running the state for decades. Not forever, though. People seem to forget that Texas wasn't always the reliably red state that it is today. This has really only been a consistent pattern for the last 30 years or so. And in the grand scheme of political office terms and election cycles, that's really not that long. However, in that time, state-level Republicans have really solidified their stronghold on the Capitol. They've done this by way of redistricting and gerrymandering, but also by limiting voting access to people who are most likely to vote blue, i.e. college students, black and brown people, people in the cities, etc. They also protect their own to a shameless degree. Again, just go look at what's been going on with Ken Paxton. Most recently, the party of small government has been interfering in local city and countywide elections, but coincidentally, they're only doing so in blue districts. They've also been interfering in the public school systems, and if you want an example of that, just go look at what's been going on in HISD, the Houston Independent School District. However, even with all of that, the Republican grip on Texas is starting to loosen. For example, Texas still very much blames the Republicans, specifically the Republican governor, for what happened with the power grid during the polar vortex of 2021. And you might think, well, people have short memories and short attention spans, so they can't possibly still be mad about something that happened three years ago. But you would think wrong. In this particular case, it's not like the grid failure of February 2021 with some eye-opening event that led those in charge to immediately fix the problem now that they and the public were aware of how big the problem actually was. No, they've done nothing to strengthen the grid, and now every time the temperatures in Texas are either too hot or too cold, Texans are bombarded with messages to conserve our energy, like it's our problem to fix, like this is a thing that we're supposed to take personal responsibility for. And yes, this is Texas, and yes, the summers are hotter now than I've ever seen them, with triple-digit days becoming the new normal in the summer. How dare you purport to govern a southern state while not doing anything to account for the very unique conditions facing the people living within that state? And every time the weather gets crazy, which again is often, Texans are served with fresh reminders of what happened three years ago, and we're reminded 
that our Republican-run state government hasn't done anything to solve a very solvable problem, apart from asking people to lower their AC usage when it's 100-plus degrees outside. Comment sections on those types of posts and announcements are usually incredibly defiant and incredulous, seemingly from people on both sides of the political aisle. And with that defiance and incredulity, fresh disdain for Ted Cruz also gets dragged up every time the temperature fluctuates. This is the man who not only fled to Cancun while people in his state were literally freezing to death, but he later went to Florida to talk smack about all the Texans who were mad at him for fleeing. Again, this was Texans on both sides of the political aisle. That's like going to your in-laws to talk smack about your own family. Who does that? Like, maybe a lot of people do, but you get my point. Anyway, some of his supporters did ask, what do you want him to do anyway? Just stay here and freeze like the rest of us? Yeah, a little bit. A little solidarity with your constituents would have been the least that Ted Cruz could have done, but also Democrats across the state certainly found things to do. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, a congresswoman from New York, flew all the way down to Texas while Ted Cruz was on his way out to help distribute aid and fundraise. She helped raise $4 million in recovery funds for the state. Also, Beto O'Rourke, the Democrat who narrowly lost the Senate seat to Ted Cruz years before and was a private citizen at the time, organized efforts to attend to the elderly and other vulnerable populations during the freeze. And in that time since that fiasco, especially in recent months, Ted Cruz has kept a shockingly low profile, especially for a man who is up for re-election. I hear he has a podcast now, which I have never listened to and I never will, but that seems to be taking up most of his time these days. I can't say whether or not Cruz thought that this lower profile would actually help or hurt him in the 2024 election, but according to the latest polling data, the top Democratic contender for the Senate seat is currently tied with him. And just another reminder that this is Texas and this is a big deal. And just another reminder that Ted Cruz only barely won his last re-election in 2018 when Beto O'Rourke challenged him as a Democrat. Colin Allred, the current Democratic challenger, looks like he wants to finish what Beto started, which by the way, I will give Beto all the credit all day long for what he accomplished in Texas in 2018. His Senate race is not to be downplayed or dismissed. But Colin Allred is more likable than Beto in a lot of ways. He checks more boxes. He's less scandalous. He has a nice smile. He plays football. These are things that matter to the voting public. Another Senate contender, Roland Gutierrez, seems to think that Texas won't elect a black senator, but the poll results suggest otherwise. Also, if Allred and Cruz are each polling at 44%, where is Gutierrez in any of that? Why is he even talking? Anyway, on top of all of that, Cruz isn't getting a whole lot of investment from his party for his re-election campaign. Mitch McConnell would rather spend Republican money elsewhere, it would seem. So as always, take polling with a grain of salt. It's easy to get excited, and results like this are certainly encouraging, but we all know by now that what happens in polls and what happens in voting booths are sometimes very different. We also know that nine months is a long time when it comes to a political campaign. A lot can happen between now and November. All right, that's it for me. If you got anything out of this, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and check out my podcast, Modern Context. Thanks.